If you are fascinated by short-lived states just as I am, you know that the period after the First World War is a gold mine when it comes down to short-lived states. In this video, we're going to talk about the short-lived Bremen Soviet Republic that was actually proclaimed right there. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history on location for you. I'm now in the German city of Bremen. If you find this content interesting, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. On the 21st of March 1918, the Germans launched the Spring Offensive on the Western Front in order to break the stalemate, codenamed Operation Michael. German guns fired more than a million shells on the enemy positions in the Sam Ara sector. A total of 32 German divisions moved forward as they overrun the southern sector of the front. The Allies were in panic and British military leaders spoke about the evacuation of British troops from the European mainland. On April 5th, the operation ended. Yes, major territorial gains were achieved. Yes, the Allies were repelled. But no, they were not defeated. It was a tactical victory, but not a strategic one. Also, the Germans lost many men they could not replace, among which their precious elite troops. Not to mention the supply lines that became severely overstretched. German commander Ludendorff then ordered to attack at other fronts in Flanders and at the Ain. Again, the Germans achieved territorial gains, but exhaustion set in. Many troops stopped advancing as they seized foodstocks in the conquered territories. In short, the German spring offensives caused more problems than it solved. And then the Spanish flu hit the troops. This worldwide influenza claimed 50 million lives. In the summer, the Allies counterattacked. Soon, the ground the Germans had taken during their previous offensive was lost to the Allies. The Allied 100 Days Offensive started with the Battle of Amiens which was known as the Black Day of the German Army, where German commanders Ludendorff and Hindenburg realized the war was a lost cause. In the German city of Kiel, a mutiny broke out on the 3rd of November, led by socialists and communists. Soon uprisings at other naval cities like Bremen, Lübeck, Hamburg and Tilsit occurred. On the 7th, the revolution spread inland. The German government resigned and a new social democrat government with Friedrich Ebert as Reich Chancellor was appointed on the 9th of November. The same day, the new German government declared a republic. The German Kaiser went into exile in the Netherlands. Two days later, the armistice was signed in a train wagon at Compiègne in France. The German revolution, which started with the Kiel mutiny and ended halfway 1919, saw different revolts in Berlin, the Spartacus uprising, as well as Munich, where the short-lived Bavarian Soviet Republic saw the light of day. But what happened here in Bremen? Left-wing labor organizations enjoyed huge support in Bremen because many worked in heavy industry. Many supported the SPD, the Social Democratic Party of Germany. This party broke with the radical left-wing Spartacus League. Many people from Bremen leaned more towards the Spartacists than the SPD. The revolt in Bremen actually occurred before the Kaiser abdicated on the 6th of November 1918. A workers' council was being established. The council began to run Bremen as a small independent state independently of the Weimar Republic. The Soviet of People's representatives assumed the role of legislature and counted a total of nine representatives consisting of three members of the Bremen radical left three USPD members, the Independent Social Democratic Party of Germany, led by Alfred Henke, and three independent soldiers. Johann Knief, a member of the International Communists of Germany, had considerable influence within the Republic and held the role of the People's Commissar. It was formed from the Worst Council established in November 1918 with a similar composition. On the 10th of January, the Workers' Council proclaimed the Republic of the Establishment of the Soviet of the People's Representatives in the city. Teachers, notably Johann Knief, formed the bulk of the leadership who expressed support for many Leninist theories. The Soviet of People's Representatives replaced the Workers' Council and was also housed in the town hall. Since its inception, the council had passed many reform laws, including the equal pay requirement. 
The long-term goal, though never realized, was also to nationalize Bremen's economy by establishing a dictatorship of the proletariat. Friedrich Ebert sent the Freikorps to this area. And the problem with the Bremen Soviet Republic was that they had no support. The surrounding areas were Weimar controlled and the Spartacus League was all the way in Berlin and pretty much defeated by now. So therefore the Freikorps came in and they toppled the short-lived Bremen Soviet Republic. Around 80 people were killed, among which its leaders who were executed by the Freikorps. This happened on February 4th. A few days later, the Soviet rebels in Bremerhaven were defeated. The Weimar Republic had an uneasy start to say the least. In March 1920, a right-wing coup attempt was undertaken, the Kapp Putsch. That same month, a left-wing workers' revolt in the Ruhr region, the Ruhr Uprising, also took place. But both were put down. Clashes between left and right-wing sympathizers occurred throughout the years of the existence of the Weimar Republic until the Nazi party under Adolf Hitler gained power in 1933. I covered many shortlist states and I'm sure there's one you haven't heard of before and that was a short-lived Galician Soviet Socialist Republic. You can find the video that I recorded back in the day in Ukraine on location right here. Well, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Best wishes from Bremen.